Hi everybody, I decided to do a little experiment today and read a couple of pages from uh, Inelia's book uh, as a test to see if you guys are interested in something like this or not and based on the feedback that I'll be getting um, we will decide if this is something we will pursue or not. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. And the book I have for today, which is uh, the one I posted about yesterday, is The Thirteenth Mage. It's one of my uh, favorite books. I'm going to open it uh, randomly and start reading from one of the chapters that I open it up. So let's see. So I open the book at chapter six and I'll start reading. Chapter six. It wasn't that she felt lonely, although she did. It was the strangeness of the place that got to her. By the time she'd been at Oak Place a week, she had realized that Owen was not a normal young man. The builders commented on it too. It was like working for a 90 year old. Now she understood why Mrs. Crow had spoken about him that way. He gave the impression of being very young at first, but after a while he seemed very set in his ways, very old-fashioned and too knowledgeable for a man in his twenties. She'd found out his real age when a birthday card arrived from his firm of solicitors. It was so sad to be orphaned, she thought to have solicitors sending you birthday cards instead of your parents. She got him one herself and bought a birthday cake as well. She wondered how Sean was spending his 25th birthday. Owen had been very touched with the detail. He was left speechless. After Jennifer and the builders sang him happy birthday and ate the cake, he went into his study and didn't come out until the next day. She was sure he was holding back the tears. Maybe people hadn't been kind to him before, she thought. She concluded that Owen wore his body and didn't actually live in it like a normal person did. Even thinking of a body as something one lived in was new to Jennifer, who had never actually thought about things like that before. She would have to find a local library and get a book about it. The builders were extremely fast at their work. No problems, no increases in budgets, no delays. It was quite exception it was quite exceptional. And the house was finished in no time at all. When the decorator firm moved in, there were a few arguments about fashion and taste, which Owen, as the owner, finally won, and they too were finished in no time at all. After the, all the workmen had gone, Jennifer found herself with a lot of time in her hands, especially during the day. Her duties were very few, and the house seemed to stay clean all on its own, except perhaps for the attic. The attic was everything Jennifer thought an attic should be. Covered in a thick layer of dust, every object had to be cleaned before being identified. It was the kind of place that gave her a tingle in her stomach, like the storeroom in her mother's bookshop or the old section of the public library back at home. Old chests filled with long-forgotten prized possessions, toys, clothes, shoes, books. There were books piled from ceiling to floor in every crook and cranny. She didn't know much about antiques, but the books alone she knew must be worth a fortune. Owen never went up there. When she mentioned the attic, he just nodded and scribbled something in his little notebook. When she mentioned cleaning it, he nodded again and told her to do whatever she pleased with it, when scribbled something else in his notebook and walked away. Armed with duster and pan, she spent the first day simply sitting in the middle of the room, taking it all in. There were no lights fittings in the attic, so she polished a couple of large candle holders and bought candles to fit. It gave the room an eerie feeling, like being shot into a remote past where time had stood still. 
Some of the chests had belonged to previous staff. She could tell by the content. Others were more refined. A couple of weeks into her discovery, she found a chest that had probably belonged to one of Owen's ancestors. There was an embroidered box with a portrait of a beautiful young woman inside it. She was wearing a purple dress and hat. With the portrait, there was a collection of letters addressed to a young man called Owen and signed, yours forever, A. They were passionate letters filled with yearning. A married woman married to someone much older than her, obviously an arranged marriage. The letters were to her lover. Jennifer looked at the dates. Some quick math revealed to her to have been Owen's great-grandfather. They spanned two whole decades and then suddenly stopped. She spent three evenings reading them. She would make herself a cup of hot chocolate and retire to the attic where she would light the candles and sit on a strange contraption she felt must be for sitting on. She wondered what had happened to the rest of the letters. If there had been any, maybe the lovers had been caught, or maybe one of them had died. She looked for more letters from A, but there were no more, not in the attic at any rate. The thought of looking for them in Owen's study when he wasn't there crossed her mind, making the hairs on her back making the hairs on the back of her neck stand on end. There was absolutely no reason they should be there. But the promise of finding them was too great. Thinking better of it, Jennifer decided to take the letters to Owen and ask him if there were any more of them. Maybe he knew what had happened to the lovers. Owen's face became ashen gray. He sat quietly, holding the letters in his hands, while Jennifer told him all about them. When she finished, he stroked the letters gently and handed them back. She died of a miscarriage, he said, at 37. In those days, it was a common occurrence. I, I think my grandfather could have done something to save her. He was schooled in medical matters but he didn't find out about her death until she failed to arrive at their meeting place. That is so sad, said Jennifer, looking down at the worn letters. He must have been heartbroken, poor man. They used to meet in Brighton, you know, once a month without fail, twice in the summer. She must have been 17 when they met, she thought. Married off at 17. Owen got up to go to his study. It's best if you put them back where you found them, he said. She watched him walk away. He was upset about something, but she couldn't recall if he had been upset before she showed him the letters or whether the letters had upset him. Then the realization hit her. His mother had died at childbirth and this woman had died due to a miscarriage. She had been so thoughtless in asking him about it. She should have known better. Putting the letters in their box, she went to his study. The door was closed, as always. She wanted to knock, but something stopped her every time she lifted her hand. It was like a lack of willpower. Jennifer wondered if she was feeling too embarrassed to apologize to Owen. As the thought entered her mind, the lack of willpower increased dramatically. Don't be silly, she said to herself, and fought against it. The effort was so great that when she finally managed to knock on the door, instead of a gentle rasp, which she had intended, a loud, urgent knock resulted instead. The door swung open. How the hell did you manage that? And this is where I'm going to stop. So, if you like these kind of things, Please let me know in the comments and um, we'll do some more. Thanks.